I suspect it's not just the button he's going to be opening, though, True. with the ICM pressure. Didn't do the math on that pay jump. We alluded to it. It's 200 and let's call it, well, no, 180, let's call it, is the gap between ninth and eighth. King Queen suited, no gap. Up we go. Oh, we're sipping up, and yeah. there's a reason why. Ace, King, Matas with medicine here. And remember, he is the shortest stack at the table. Might he force feed it all forward with an opportunity to nab this 175? So he's only playing a 10 big blind stack, is going to jam most of his chips in there. The old in case of emergency, we have seen a few occasions on which remarkably the fold was appropriate given what developed behind. This is a more modern advent of the game. This is just a tough spot because mm -hmm. Watson raised from plus two, getting jammed on immediately by the next seat over. It isn't that weak of a hand, but the price is quite good. Also important to note that Montaz is the shortest stack, so he's got a little bit more desperation in him where maybe there's a bit more pairs. Looks like we're going to run it with 45k chips back. It is a hand that has so many wonderful blocker effects to the ace-king, the ace-queen, kings and queens. Never mind just the sheer firepower, but... Up against an ace-king, it has itself some real issues. One point six five in the middle, a club in the window, along with a queen. Watson hits the side card. What a disaster this is going to prove to be for Matas, who's not looking for an excuse to get away with just forty-five thousand back. No, that light is flickering, my friend. Has Watson acted yet? Yeah. He Did he check? Checked. I, has he? Okay. One way or another, the 45 is getting yeah. in here, is it, it not? Watson will always bet the turn. Yeah, Symbolus with the check back. I'll tell you something. In spite of the fact that we know that Watson loves this king-queen on this particular board, I have a little bit of respect for the fact that he didn't just go flicking the 50 out there, giving maybe Mata something to think about in terms of, oh boy, how am I performing here? In case it wasn't such a foregone conclusion, but as we can see, it is. And the disappointment worn on Symbolus' face is with good reason, as he needs the ace, instead hits the nine, and, well... That's about as short-lived a stint as one can have at a final table. He was hoping for better, no doubt about it. Literally played just one hand yeah. and had a great spot to double up and be in contention. That's tournament poker, the life he's chosen. He'll be back, no doubt about it. Unclear whether or not he's going to dance in the PLO streets with us. But opportunities to register for that 100K pot limit Omaha available. Holds that honor at north of 21 million, but it is going to be the biggest first place payout. Just 15 players were paid in this one. And who eked in on the right side of the bubble? Walk us through those who have already visited the pay desk, Randy. Well, first it was Boss Paul got 15th. Then followed by Patrick Antonius, a legend in itself, 14th. Then that was 317,000 for yes, the Ding Biao. Yes, 317,000 to 344,000 for both Ding Biao and Bryn Kenny, falling in 13th mm -hmm. and 12th respectively. Then there was 11th place finish from Christoph Vogel, saying 390k in the ultimate final table. Bubble Boy was Stephen Chidwick, who jammed his 8-7 suited into two aces. Oopsie. He didn't get there. Malinowski has jammed his A7 suited into Petrangelo and Co. Jaffe out of there as Nikki P does make the call. And Big spot for Nikki yeah, P. 1.8 million chip pot available. 
to Petrangelo. What a delightful spot he finds himself in. You see a better than two to one favorite. King seven deuce and the disaster that is a Malinowski side card pops its head up on this board. Deuce on the turn and it is strictly an ace. No, the ace doesn't work either. Just the 10 for Petrangelo. Instead, it's the nine and the GGs are issued. This Ew. has been a rough final table for the short stacks. First king can't beat king queen. Mm -hmm. Now ace 10 can't beat the ace seven. Well, the worst of it is performing quite well thus far here at the FT. And Petrangelo, having already tasted glory, looking for his car keys. I'm kidding. $661,000, eighth place finish. When you consider that he's in for at least 200 k possibly more. You don't know how in the black he is. But he said his other title earlier in the week didn't count, and unfortunately, I'm not sure how he's going to feel about an eighth place finish here. Don't hang your head, though, Nikki P. Took the best of it. Didn't work out. Look, it's about deviating at the right time sure. when they don't know you're deviating. That's when you <laughs> get the edge. Yeah. Of, oh, I expect them to do this, and then you're not. Like, you can really create some nice value. Mm -hmm. But if you do it at the wrong time, you're actually giving away quite a bit yourself. That's why I love watching the best play. They they really just shine in these kinds of spots. We do have an interesting development here. Nines shining. 225. And it's caught the attention of this king-queen suited for Mateos. I think it's noteworthy that he's three-betting this hand on. Ooh. Sorry, Jaffe right behind him. Ace-queen's in a tricky spot. But it's interesting that he three-bets because some players have been flattening the king-queen suited in position. Not El Conquistador. And let's see how Jaffe feels about it. This is UTG plus one for Jason. Cut off from Mateos. Jonathan with ace-queen off in the small, using a time bank. This has got to be one of the most uncomfortable spots for him. Early position raise, medium stack three bet against the 20 big blind open. Like, you can't feel too great about this. Also holding just 15 big blinds. You don't have the most fold equity, but it seems he's found yeah. the raise. Nice for Jaffe. Four bet to 1.4. Kuhn promptly folds. Mateos, with a larger commitment, asks for the count. He is the covering stack. It isn't quite an all-in. And in terms of this choice to four bet from Jaffe, Randy, how important is him perceiving that Adrian has some three bet folds with that sizing before he plays it this way? Extremely important. If he didn't think that, he would never be jamming ace queen. He knows Mateus would be willing to attack. Mateus now, he's asking the question, how often is it a pocket pair lower than the king-queen? Because the more combos he can add, the more you know, the better price he can make a call here. Is it jacks? Is it tens? Is it ever nines? He's going to go for it. Big pot. Bigger for Jaffe, given he's the covered stack. And the dominant hand here. All of a sudden, another big one, Bruce. 3.4 million in the middle. I can tell you who Steve O'Dwyer is rooting for as the second shortest stack coming in. And it isn't that man to his right, Jaffe. the flop we go. Oh. King, Jack, nine. Mateos finding top pair. Jaffe, Broadway gutter and an ace hunt. Jason folded nines as well. Would have been bottom set.
Can Double J find the ace or 10? No. An eight on the river, and yet again, the best hand gets it in, and the dominated hand kicks it out. Oh, for three. If Len was here, he'd be very proud of you. Would, uh... King Gaga, in honor of Ren Lin. <clears throat> well, for Jaffe, he finally found a cash here in Montenegro, but found a hand that was supposed to perform considerably better than that, and instead leaves him out the door in seventh place, 765K pickup. was supposed to do better than he did in that one. What can you say? Didn't he go with the plus 350? It only gets bigger eventually getting to that 4.8 million up top. And Watson with 17 bigs, he really just has to chill out. There's nothing he can do. Oh, what timing is that for Badzikowski? Under the gun open from a tails with the queen jack suited. A min raise, Bads just 8.30. Ready to saddle up. Not all, but most. Mateos is going to be priced in here with Queen Jack suited, and he's got the chips that can afford this call. Oh, Watson's got Ace Jack, but it hurts. Oh, but he so. also knows that Bazikowski is going to get called and could be at risk, and he can maybe get that pay jump. Yeah, he doesn't anticipate too much raise fold versus this sizing, and so with that in mind, and still pain percolating from that ace five. Check fold on the river. Watson bows out. <clears throat> Tails ushers in the last 50. And we play for two million. That's his girlfriend on hand as always. You want, you want a partner too, Mateos? I don't know that there's any available for temporary use here. Good start. I love that sight right there. Those two so close. Never far from one another. Oh, you might want to go back to giving him a little comfort because there's outs now. Suddenly the warm embrace of his girlfriend picks up a little frost on the turn, but there you go. She knows when the kings have held. So that was cool. And at this stop in particular, although Makita. My money is on eight of diamonds, eight. <laughs> My money is in fucking queen jack. Or queen jack. So insights into why it was that the ace jack thought as long as it did and just as you broke down, Randy, it was the busted straight draw combos, king high or queen high that Bads had on his mind. <laughs> he is tormented, but he'll feel pretty good. 750. And he realizes he was up against a set of nines. Kuhn. Not feeling all that good, given that he's one of the two shortest stacks at the table, but ace five, good enough, he uh -oh. says, from the cutoff to make it 750 to go. He's dominated here by the boss stack, who says, let's get it in. You saw a quick lick of the lips. I got and a bad one. Jason says, I got a bad one, and take a look at just how bad it is. Now remember, all in hands that have had the best of it have not performed well. Let's see whether or not the inverse will prove more fruitful. Maybe flop a wheel. Slow start. All oh, right. yeah. Maybe chop. Hmm. We can dream, Maybe. right? Nine. 
Well, nine commandant is what the turn says. Cone draws dead. A sixth place finish as the 11th Triton title eludes Jason Kuhn collecting the first of our seven figure payouts, Randy, almost $1.1 million. So dollars. To, lose the random bluff. <laughs> to add to his career what total of over team? $27 million. You see yeah. good buddy Ben Tollerine there to support. The road's clear relative to moments ago. More clear, I should say, as Jason Kuhn and all of his fight have been vanquished. But that's why I said King Jack. A7, is there ever a consideration? You know, he's definitely considering it. My guess is he ends up passing this from the hijack, but... Well, notice that he looks at Watson's okay. stack and still jams. Almost jammed, 750, 400 behind. And Mateos has got two queens. What bad timing is this for Bazikowski? I feel like for Mateos, you're supposed to click or just not rejam all in, just to stop Bazikowski somehow folding his hand if there was a rejam. Behind and Malinowski's got ace jack. Quickly in the muck, he knows that Mateos' range is strong. And now we play 1.875 in the middle with 400k back. It's a king high board. Can Makita save the remaining 400,000 somehow? It's not his texture. It's a tricky spot for him. I mean, it really depends on what you think Mateos is continuing with there, but the king's not a good card. I do think Mateos can have some, like, maybe, like, king-jack suited, king-queen suited, I potentially. I mean, his kicker with the ace is really low, right? Mateos can have ace-x, but almost certainly a bigger kicker than a seven. It's, like, hard to really... I mean, I don't know if... Mateos is calling with Queen Jack suited, right? So, because because Makita's range is so tight, so it's possible Makita just like never has the best hand here, like literal never. And then obviously Mateos <coughs> can have pocket pairs. So he's just trying to figure out is Ace High ever good? Like you mentioned, the kicker is a huge issue for Bazikowski. I mean, he has a club, right? So we're, you, you're doing the math. It's like 400 to win 2.4. 2 he's getting like 6 to 1. It's actually probably just a hair under that because he only has 400K. So it's 2.3. But What if we sprinkle in some ICM? I mean, the thing is he's actually getting the right odds here in part because of the club. That I think that makes the math a little trickier. I actually think A7 off with no club. I bet he finds the fold with the club. That was call. Yeah. So Badzikowski is at risk. Looking for backdoor opportunities or that ace against Mateos. It's actually a pretty tough spot. Turns to 10 and he's shaking his head. One step out the door, but can he find an ace? No. Zikowski. It's actually a really in interesting fifth. little pot, Randy. Yeah. Both, I think, like, the pre-flop decision is interesting, and given what Makita saved, his flop decision. Both pretty hard, I feel like. But um, it's always fun to watch Makita navigate it, the streets. Great player. One of the best. So he will have to settle for fifth place for $1.4 million. He will be remembered. He's definitely one of the most dangerous players 
at this Triton final table. Five ta titles under his belt, won't be capturing a six. Like if, if he had like 9-10 suited or something and decided to have played at preflop, I think he just calls. I think so. Yeah. Now Watson's going to jam his remaining chips with King-7 offsuit, quickly called by Mateos, who's got Jack-5 off. Favorite is Watson, 64% to be precise. Will his hero fold be rewarded? Now this is a spot where the chip leader is rooting for Watson. Well, Watson is in the lead. Not anymore. Jack on the turn and the head nod from Watson realizing that his fate is grim and officially over. That was a great fold from Watson, but couldn't spin up the very next hand. I mean, Sir Watts, king of the value bet, first of his name. Went for value with the King-9, got raised, and uh, made a good fold. I mean, good run for a great player, and I'm sure we'll see Michael Watson back at many final tables. Well, he's definitely going to be playing some PLO later because he is the holder of the Trident, winning a PLO, a short deck, and a No Limit Hold'em title at Triton Festivals did happen to win the No Limit portion in the 30K for a million dollars earlier. Don't think he wants to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not this spot here. <laughs> like, you know what, maybe another day, but not today. <laughs> All right, so, ace three, jamming. Definitely don't want a three in your hand now as O'Dwyer. And let us call with 9-4 suited, which actually has 43% equity, not too shabby. Yeah, the two over cards to the three and having a live suit, not too shabby, agreed. Queen 8-8, eight, eight. dry. Dwyer looking for a nine or four to stay alive. King on the turn, one more chance. Oh. <laughs> I think we got a view into the future there, maybe. Clairvoyance, is it? No. No, it is not. They were it's psyching actually us out. the Jack. And that is going to be the end of Steve O'Dwyer. You saw the Nine of Hearts there I, briefly. I saw it. That was a bit of a. At least they didn't do that to Steve at the table. <laughs> That would be like really dirty. Like, oh, a nine. Wait, no, it's not a nine. What? Well, Shaman O'Dwyer is going to settle for third place. 2.157 million. You know what? It is always disappointing to go out, but I'm going to have to say he might not be too sad about it because he wasn't really hit with the deck, and that's a nice payday, Brian. Oh, yeah, it is. I, You know, a lot of things are about perspective, and it's – really easy to look favorably on a third place finish here for big money when you were short the entire time, right? I mean, really it's like things went way better than expected if you're starting from the vantage point of like the beginning of the final table as a, as a jump off point. But yeah, no, Steve, amazing poker player, you know, been just playing big tournaments, winning big money for as long as anyone. Um, I can tell you that if I'm ISOing 10-2 off, 40 deep uh, in a heads-up match, I'm going to be lost on a lot of runouts and make a lot of blunders. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but it's... It's enough. unclear how to approach it. Yeah, I <clears> should <throat> give you pause. So we take a flop top two pair for Melanowski. Victor would like to... Take a pause here and live in this reality for as long as possible. And he's going to love to see the 250K bet from Mateos. Now, it's interesting because we've got so much hand right now, mm -hmm. but we also kind of want to build the pot. Do we check call or do we check raise? So was the, this was limp pre, right? Yeah. Correct. I think that influences us a little bit more towards call. Does but agree? I would think both are fully on the table as options. 
Mateos has one of those hands that can really spaz out. Three on the turn. Quite the blink. And and what makes this a great candidate for continuing to bluff? Well, Petrangelo likes to call it the bad boy corner, ace low and king low. They just kind of lose their mind because they unblock a lot of the one call hands, let's say. Let's say Victor had 8-7 or 10-8. I thought that it was a heart might have saved Mateos from that fate. Maybe like the offsuit three, three of diamonds. I felt very confident he bet. I wasn't sure here, but this is the kind of generally above the rim play that a lot of high rollers find here. Jaffe, you know. he's just bet 1.9 million. Uh, so in other words, you... When you do this and you overbet, you don't want to have like a seven, eight, ten yeah. queen, all that stuff. Exactly. You've got Victor's got queen eight and seven eight and ten seven that are going to check call very high frequency and then check fold turn nicely. Um, when T Mateos goes this big on the turn, I, he's asking more than those hands to fold. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Victor's going to fold most four if it's not four x of hearts and maybe mixes in some nine fold. Yeah. Remember, we don't think he has much jack when we bet small and get called. The sick thing is, if the river's not a heart, Mateos has a lot of follow through with this hand because you unblock 4x of hearts, 9x of hearts. Well, let's see. River card is the 7 of hearts. Oh, that may save him. At, I mean, on the other side, Mateos has two very clear bluff candidates in 5, 6, and 8, 10 that both get there. So of the hearts we could see... This may be the one where Mateos buries himself. <sighs> There's five million Super chips close. in the middle. Malinowski has top two pair. Mateos min bet the flop, over bet the turn, 1.9 million. Now has a decision with just no king heart. high. Find the check. Yeah, I mean, if his king is a heart and not a diamond, it's probably a different story here. Yeah. But. It's super close. Oh. Oh, he's going to throw in a time bank. This is a critical decision. I mean, I guess Malinowski is just going to call, but <laughs> you're not re like you're loving it on the turn and on the river. You're kind of like, yeah, of all the hearts to have, like the nine of hearts doesn't block Mateos's like heart draws because he wasn't banging nine X of hearts for that size on the turn. <sighs> oh my. He has announced all in, and if oh, Malinowski boy. can call. He will leave Mateos on crumbs. He's Is got a lot of hand. hand banks. He's thinking. I, I mean, I, he might fold, but he, you got to bet call here. Call's got to be a decent favorite, I would think. Yeah, I'm probably calling against a wreck that I don't think knows how to bluff. This is... But this is Mateos. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, the thought that he's thinking, I mean, I, it's you're playing for a trophy, you got to think, but... We're also playing for $1.5 million. Can Limitless find the call? He's uncomfortable, given what's on the line. Can he flick it in? He's giving it real thought. This is like, he's not posturing. So Mateos is really, his target at this point is Jack X hands, if in particular, that don't have a heart, right? That have called twice. Yeah, I mean, no, because Victor has more. He's got a bunch of 9X. To, yes, he is targeting, hoping a Jack Maybe some, some 9X that called turn, sure, yeah. Yeah, the majority of 9X, I think, is supposed to call turn. That's yeah. the crazy thing. Um, you know, f for Mateos' decision, which I think is the most interesting part, I mean, it comes down to how much 9x did he think Victor called. What did he say? Wow! Oh, oh my. my wow! Just folded. Dude, he got jack Top. nine with a heart oh to fold. God. That's sick. Two pair is <laughs> down. <laughs> I like I like my pregame wow. guesstimate that this was Adrian's match because if you can take the old King Dewey with no heart and just go three streets and get the guy to fold top two that check called the flop. Granted, I mean, yeah, 5-6 got there, 10-8 got there, but that is, that's a hell of a fold.
550. Also, just thinking about this, but on the Jack Nine hand, maybe the Nine of Hearts is not the most relevant flush blocker. Like, does Mateos ever 1.5x turn or whatever with like Nine X of Hearts? Yep, like, 100% never, right? agree. No. Yeah. 10, 8, 8, two hearts open into straight draw. Mateos with two overs and the king of hearts could be very relevant. Especially with king jack. Can turn a lot of draws. Mateos was the preflop raiser. Does follow through with 325k. Yeah, nice hand to start getting value from a lot of Victor's range. Victor plays the S check call. The Jack would be a real bad card for Mateos. Great card for Victor. Four hearts. I think we're going to see Adrian check back here. He's yeah. just got the best hand a lot, but... Victor would have been in a hell of a spot facing a bet. You really don't like giving up open enders. Heads up, but it's a tough one to proceed. Oh, that's mm. a king high flush for Mateos and a straight for Victor. And Victor has first to decide between check or block. His hand is not strong enough for a big bet for value, knowing that he loses to every heart. like he is going to reach for block. Yeah. Is that 450? 525. Quarter pot. Enough value to raise this king of hearts? I mean, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? We're, we're raising this for sure. I'm yeah. just trying to dissect Victor's block, and I'm Thinking I play check with this hand, I think. Given that a jack came in and that completes our jack seven, jack nine, we don't really have queen jack. So Mateos will raise to 2.2 and yeah, can't be happy about that. Already borderline to go for value to <clears throat> bluff catch with this. I don't see any special properties, but it seems difficult to dissect what a good bluff catch would be. Yeah. I mean, just having a heart simply takes out bluff cards from Mateos. So, by its very nature, having anything with a heart is going to be better. Does lay down to straight. Advantage Mateos now in terms of chip counts. And that's a difficult spot for Mateos to bluff to. And, you know, that's a line that's not going to come out of my mouth very often because he's going to find bluffs in spots that are difficult for a lot of people. But that's that's a tricky one. Very close. Mateos, slight lead. Is there some... Uh Hands that can interact with a lot of blood. I, I, I do remember a spot. Wow. Though. Yeah. He checks the queen 10 suited. I kind of think of that as disrespectful where he's saying, look, I'm going to small ball this guy. We'll see. Does come <laughs> jack 10 8. You said it. There's a bit of interaction when someone makes a pair. Someone else often's got a piece as yeah, well. The PLO guys just got to town. That's a nice looking PLO hand, huh? Top pair, yeah. open in straight draw versus middle pair in the gut shot. He's going to be happy that he didn't raise pre inflate this pot. Yeah. But Limitless not looking to keep this pot small as he bets 350000 In comes the check call from Mateos. 1.45 in the middle now. And the 
Queen is top two pair from Mateos in the straight for Limitless. This is one of Limitless's straights that can find a check here. When you block the jack, you are going to make Adrian a little more oriented towards... What did he bet on the flop? Small enough that 7x with backdoor was calling? I would think so. One third. You have 350 into 750. Yeah, you make Adrian a little more 8 and 10 oriented by having both the jack and the 9. Just if we have to check back some 9. He yeah, agrees. It's a very reasonable one. Now, if we know he has queen 10, we're betting all day. The 4. And now maybe Mateos thinks he's got the best hand top. Well, queen yeah, 10. We're seeing bet and raise on this river basically every time. This would be... Pretty nice looking hand if you're Adrian. Go anywhere between block all the way up to pot. Not expecting to run into a nine and then Victor can raise really anything up to about 80%. So he comes in with block, 350K. Yeah, versus a raise with the queen 10 here. How are the queen and the 10 as blockers? They're good. Yeah. They're good because I think 10-9 is a very natural check also on the turn, but also 900. it just unblocks, allows for Victor to bluff because Victor's going to call with a queen so often. Yeah. Victor makes it 900k. It's a small That's raise. That's a very small raise. This is... 2.7-ish. Can Mateos get away? Or is this just too much hand? I think he's calling this size. Yeah, I would not find this fold. It's just so cheap. Eh? You just can easily picture your opponent clicking buttons when you chose the smallest size in your value repertoire. Is there ever any sliver of value he beats? No. I mean, so this is just a nine hand? I, I, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you know like what? Queen he eight does. Maybe yeah, or queen eight makes a lot of sense. At queen this size, four. this could be something getting greedy. This could be the eight four suited getting greedy for this size. This seems reasonable. If that's the case, then it's going to be very that. difficult to fold. Yeah, Randy makes a great point. We're we're beating some value here. Probably not eight four, but yeah. I just think that size is pretty small, and it could be greed. Well, it does call. All right, so so I have a hand for you. Mm -hmm. I kind of never forgot this hand because I feel like it, it was like part of like teaching a lesson and changed my attitude in some spots. I, I just remember in, in one of, not like the first one drop, but maybe it was like the third one. I played a pot on day, it wasn't, I don't remember, again, I also don't remember the details. It was on day one. I had, was at the feature table. I think Ivy. And I played this pot versus Nick Petrangelo where... I don't remember the details. I ended up folding like top pair. I think it was a blind versus blind spot where I like knew I was supposed to call, but I'm just like, and this was not, the, anyway, I learned lessons from this, but I, I ended up making this fold because it's just like one of these spots where I felt like it's population just under bluffs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just not, I, I should call, I'm supposed to call, I think, but like it just, it's not good often enough I fold. I find out later that I got bluffed, and I'm just like, guys are getting too good for me to, like, make reads like that against yep. good players, you know, even in big tournaments. Because one of my previous reads was that in the biggest tournaments... Oh, sorry. Brian, Let's I need to cut your hand. story short because it's top pair versus yeah. bottom two pair on this monotone board. Mateos even has the nine of hearts. It's a disastrous collision. Yeah, this is, both these guys have good hands. Yeah. And, you know, if that jack nine hasn't shown up, then Adrian would also not know that Victor check called top two on a flop previously, or whatever that's worth. 2.2 .2 in the middle. Jack on the turn. Does change equities. Pretty not. nice spot if you're Mateos to keep putting money in for value. Counting down his stack. Yeah, I mean, block nine probably ten. just like bet and then check back river most of the time. 
depends on the river, I guess, but. He is going to start with the bet, and it's going to be one and a half million. Yeah, I mean. That size does look like we're going to see some check back. Yeah. Over. Yeah, it d depends on his turn size, but uh, yeah. I, I think he had a lot of options on this turn. It's an interesting spot to just check shove if you're limitless. You know, Adrian's Bluffs have a fair amount of equity at this point. There's only, I don't know, 10x no hard occasionally, but... And a pot size bet left. Yeah, and if you're good, maybe he doesn't bet again. Exactly. <laughs> the river card is a full house for Malinowski. I know it's that river. And a quick check back, as yeah. you guys expected. Huge par. And on one of the best uh, rivers to bet, too. Mm. Indeed. Interesting hand. Yeah, check shelf turn. I wasn't thinking that either, but after you said it, it makes a lot of sense, actually. I think my new profile picture is going to be Adrian with King 2 offsuit as limitless folds. That's <laughs> that's going to be That replaces Jaffe's <laughs> bad fold to 5-4 offsuit. Well, you could do limitless folding Jack 9, couldn't you? <laughs> I think that's for him to do. <laughs> yeah. Bad folds suck. You feel so bad. Well, we are playing shallow stacks now, given how short Mateos is. It is 8-3 off versus 8-6 at the moment. I love, even among the best players in the world, just that narrative, Brian, had Limitless's fold been correct. And this is not this is not about Victor in particular. Oh, no, well, we well. got a spot. Top and bottom versus top pair. Could this be trouble for Mateos? I mean, if he check raises here, it will be. Yeah, this looks pretty darn good to check raise. We've got an unprotected top pair at a depth that's not looking to save money should we be coolered. But he just check calls, and maybe wow. there's a path to saving himself. If the board gets dicey, turn card is a seven. That's going to give Mateos a gut shot now and nowhere to go. This is this is very grim for Adrian at this point. Yeah. Victor's in full Reaper mode. You can see it. He's got a sickle in hand. It's just got a clear bet and I don't Mateos can go nowhere I mean I guess the question is whether he should just jam or call this yeah it's close I think some of it comes down to do you think Victor's ever taking 7x and betting like this which is reasonable because you check called flop I could see shove okay. cut off the equity to it. he does jam and he's going to get snapped off Mateos at risk. One card to go. Looking for a seven, a six, or a five to stay alive in this heads up match where 1.5 more million dollars is on the line. How about a four? Let's see more poker. We could see a four. Four chop. And what is that fate for Mateos? It's a 10, and that's it. Great heads up match. That was really interesting. GG to Limitless. A little fist bump to himself. And a great journey and a bit of disappointment for Mateos, who held the chip lead at some point in this heads up match. We'll have to settle for a second for $3.3 million. He's got to keep his head held high, though. I mean, he played great, and th really the hand of the match was a successful bluff that he uh, executed. Yep. There is the that champion. Was a great match. It was an excellent match. $4.789 million and Limitless captures the title in this 200K against all those great names right below him. One being Jonathan Jaffe in seventh place. Just thought I mentioned that. I thought you were going to say those great names <laughs> and Jonathan Jaffe.